Welcome back to the final episode in this series. In episode one and two, we saw how false beliefs and nutrition play a huge part in health disparities of black people and people of color. However, there is one more topic to address, fitness. In this episode, we will also share what you can do to help. So let's talk. Episode three, here we go. all Americans do not meet the national recommendations of 150 minutes per week of moderate to vigorous activity. Even more concerning, two-thirds of Black American women do not meet these national guidelines. This is especially important as stats indicate that Black American women are disproportionately impacted by health conditions associated with low physical activity, including obesity, type two diabetes, colon cancer, and heart disease, other women from all ethnic and racial groups have barriers to regular physical exercise. Many are in lower paying jobs, work longer hours, and cost to gyms are factors. Child care can also be a barrier. And even exercise is seen as extra money that could be spent on necessities. One major issue is the lack of black female role models to positively influence black women to take care of their health. Over the decades, we've seen a surge in Māori athletes. As fantastic as this is, it still leaves a gap for women that aren't interested in sports. Who are to role model them on living a healthy lifestyle that excludes sports? Lastly, there's a lack of tikanga Māori. Māori customs, methods and culture when it comes to fitness facilities. This can be a barrier that can stop women from starting or even continuing their fitness journey. So if we can address these cultural needs for Māori women, we can then provide them the support and reassurance so that they can become wahine toa, strong women. Now you might wonder, okay, I have all of this information now. What can I do? How can I help? Well, here are some ideas. Number one, chat it up. We love to chat as instructors, so strike up a conversation. Really listen to the person you are talking with. Seems simple, and it is. Find out what people like to do in their spare time. Then go from there. Invite them to work out with you. Number two, mix it up. Spend some time out in the communities doing community work with different groups of people. Find out the traditions of movement that others enjoy. You'll find out a lot about their views on fitness and leisure time activities. Then share with them an experience you had that may have been awkward with fitness. We all have them. Then encourage people to come and try something new with you. And number three, dine it up. Do you know that great feeling you get when you try a new recipe and you like it? Well, that's a way to understand how nutrition plays a role in improving the health of others. Some of the tastiest foods can be made healthy while still being delicious. And there is more we can do. Inform and educate people about the health benefits of physical activity. Focus on the health benefits besides the usual focus on weight loss. Encourage women to find friends who would exercise with them and identify activities that can be done with the entire family. Work with community organizations and leaders to advocate for funding to bring activities to church and civic organizations to help increase access. When we know firsthand some of the difficulties facing black people and people of color, we can find ways to make fitness possible with these groups. Let's work to debunk myths, expand the knowledge base of all, and move forward with the growth mindset to create the change we seek to see in this world. There we have it, Change Series 2. Thank you so much for watching. See you another time.